Hey, what's up guys? Thank you so much for clicking on this video. This is our first video back, uh, well, our first video we've filmed since uh, quarantine because yeah. we were separate for quite a while. Yeah, for three months straight. Yeah. And uh, judging by how 2020 is going, uh, by the time we finally upload this video, uh, who knows what's what's gonna be going on in the world. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, uh, as of right now, quarantine has been lifted in our state at least. I know quarantine is still around in some states, but uh, it's getting a look back things are going back to normal just a little bit so hopefully everyone's over there is staying safe you know uh keeping your distance as much as you can and just doing what you can just wear a mask i shouldn't have to make it fun it's science it's it's science no yeah, and uh just for uh disclaimers for this this video and this list that we're doing uh we're just gonna put up a list of disclaimers right now and we're gonna go ahead and choose an honorable mention that we have the same, which is Booksmart. And this movie is actually a really funny coming of age movie that actually didn't make that much money. And I really wish it would have made more money than it actually did. Yeah, and it's a movie that, the first time I saw it, I really liked it, but I didn't really fully uh, realize how much I loved it until I watched it a second time. And I've seen it three times now. And it's just a really feel good movie. It's hilarious. And like I said, it just makes you feel good while watching it. And I honestly feel like in just, about 10 or 15 years time, maybe even shorter, this movie's gonna be a cult classic yeah. movie. For my number 30, I'm gonna go with Django Unchained, which is a really fun, fast paced movie. And if you're anything like I am, which hopefully you are, uh, I hate racism, you know? And so I hate racists. And so this is a really fun movie because, you know, it just goes into how uh, Christoph Waltz character and uh, Jamie Foxx's character are going around and, and actually legally killing slave owners. This is where the fun begins. It goes into extreme gore as great as Quentin Tarantino does it. It has a great storyline to go along with it. For my number 30. My heart was filled with hope and love, but now it is cold, colder than ice. For my number 30, I have Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and this is a movie that really captivated me with its animation. It's such a unique style of animation that took the animators so long. If you just read about how long it took to uh, animate each frame in this movie, it's just a wonder that they finished this movie at all. And it's a, it introduces a, such a strange concept of the multiverse and different Spider-Man in such a great, fantastic way, and it's such a great origin story for Miles Morales. For my number 29 is gonna be Inception, which is one of Christopher Nolan's best. And it's a movie that really, Christopher Nolan really told us, hey, this is what I'm truly about. I don't care if you understand it or not. I'm not gonna give you the answers, but this is what I'm about. And it really, he really pulled it off very well in a way where some things may be confusing, but at the same time, they're not so confusing that you can't wrap your mind around a little bit and are you able to enjoy it as well. For my number 29, I have Gone Girl, which is, which Mar like Marquez said, whenever he brought this movie up in his list, uh, that this is a very infuriating movie uh, because of some, a lot of things that happen. Rosamund Pike plays a psychopath to perfection. My number 28 is going to be American Soldier? American Soldier. American Cap Soldier. Captain America, American, American, <laughs> not Captain Amer American, Captain America, American Soldier. Captain America, Winter Soldier. <laughs> That's very repetitive. Cap <laughs> Captain America, American Soldier. <laughs> Yeah, that's not what's called. Okay, uh, let's try let's try another title. Which is <laughs> another title? <laughs> You're just gonna go to another movie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that yeah. title didn't work. Screw 28. <laughs> Couldn't say it. It's also 3.28 a.m., so. Yeah, and we got that working against us too. Yeah. <laughs> For my number 28, I'm gonna go with Captain America, Winter Soldier. And to me, I this movie is just really great. It's one of the best in the MCU because this movie really is just Pretty much the, the catalyst, or it starts the development of Captain America, because in Winter's and and um, First Avenger, he's just all for the government, all for fighting for the government, almost believing there's nothing wrong with the government. And the reason why this movie is so great is because it just starts that character development of him realizing that the government isn't always right. Sometimes the government can be corrupt, and sometimes the government does stuff that's no not in anyone's best interest at all and sometimes you just need to go against it and that's that's honestly pretty much what starts civil war what, what starts captain america's mind in civil war 
And it's just a really great kind of almost spy movie in the MCU. For my number 28, I have Django Unchained, which is actually a pretty fitting movie to talk about with the other major event that's going around uh, the world with the Black Lives Matter protests and riots. And because this is a very satisfying movie, like Marquez said, of Jamie Foxx and Christoph Waltz going around the country uh, killing uh, slave owners. But even with all the violence, that's the, the fun violence that's in the movie, it still has a lot of heart with Jimmy Fox trying to find his enslaved wife. For my number 27, oh God. <clears throat> <laughs> you about to die? Yeah. 27. <laughs> my number 27 is gonna be Drive, which to me shows is the epitome of the kind of actor that Ryan Gosling is which is a very subtle actor. He doesn't talk a lot. He doesn't say much of anything, but he knows he is a fantastic actor. Even with the little dialogue he's given, with what was just with the little of everything he's given, he knows exactly facial movements, how to walk, how to do everything very subtly to where it just feels extremely real. This movie in itself seems like a slow, it seems like a very boring movie if you were to explain it to somebody. And while it is a little slow, it really works for it, and it makes this movie very intense. For my number 27, I have 1917, which is a war movie that's shot to look like it's all one take, which really elevates this movie to just another level. And just by the end of it, you feel like you're actually with them the entire time they went on this uh, very dangerous and uh, exhausting journey. For my number 26, I'm gonna go with Annihilation, which to me is a movie that did not get the credit it deserved. It's a very different type of movie, a very overly fought movie that to some people you may watch it like, what is this? Does it even make any sense? But if you think about it, it can. And to me, it really takes advantage of the fact that film is an art form. And it's the kind of movie that I love because you can have several people watch it and all have different interpretations, which is, Art. And this movie had an all-female cast. I don't I don't know why it didn't get as popular as like the Ghostbusters reboot had which had an all-female cast. This one had an all-female cast. Everyone was smart. All the women were smart. All the women were great actresses. All the characters felt real. To me, it was just a great movie overall that really was extremely overlooked. Right. Spit it out. Ready? For my number 26, I have Avengers Endgame, which I do want to bring up my shirt that I'm wearing uh, because I wore it specifically for this. Video, since I'd be talking about it. Um, since but you, Since you'd be talking about it? This movie was just such a great conclusion to a universe that was 11 years in the making and over 20 movies. Uh, and it just ended so many storylines so perfectly. Our number 25 is going to be Lady Bird, which to me is one of my favorite coming of age movies of all time. This movie feels so real and so simple. One of my favorite things about this movie is the ending because the ending could have gone for a very extremely like uh, Americanized cinem cinema, uh, heart to heart, heart to heart scene which with the mom and the daughter but it doesn't it doesn't go for that it goes for what could be what is real which is you know uh, the the daughter may not they're not gonna they may not run back to each other and embrace each other but at the end of the but the end of it all they still love each other and they still realize that whenever i try to explain this movie to people like it, se it seems like it has such a simple plot which it does uh because it's literally just about a girl living through high school uh, and just her trying to make it uh, to graduation. But it does it so flawlessly. Like you said, it's done so real. It just feels so authentic. My number 24 is gonna be Grand Budapest Hotel, which is one of, if not my favorite, Wes Anderson movie. It's just a very packed movie with a lot of stuff going on, a ton of stuff going on, and way more stuff than you think could possibly be put into a good movie. But it works, and it, it works in the Wes Anderson way. He knows how to make things feel so strange and so off-putting and so weird, so that whenever things are done in the uh, unconventional way of film, of putting jam-packing stuff in there, it works because everything else is unconventional for him. For my number 24, I have Mother, and this is a movie that really uh, feels like you either can love it or hate it, and there's not really anybody that's in between. Uh, it's a very polarizing movie. Uh, but I'll, I'm honestly on the side that I really love this movie. Uh, a lot of people who hated it didn't felt like it was too heavy with symbolism. But I feel like you could watch this movie 
uh, without any without noticing any of the symbolism and just watch it as a movie uh, until the end when it starts to get really weird. It really kind of forces you to really think about what the rest of the movie is about. But overall, I felt I felt like the symbolism was great. The way they were able to use metaphors about certain things that that were are kind of biblical uh, was just pretty perfect in my opinion. My number twenty three is going to be the Florida Project which really is a heartbreaking movie, but it's disguised because it takes place uh, with these children and they're the focus of the movie, these happy-go-lucky, innocent children. Uh, and so whenever you see it from their perspective, they are able to see things in another light and no another light of happiness. But at the same time, they're living in really bad circumstances and the little girl, especially with her mom, really bad circumstances, but this movie really knows how to concentrate on those kids. And the characters are very well thought out too. Even though at times they may seem simple, the acting in them is really well done to where they can really pull off with these characters, who these characters are and what they are actually going through. For my number 23, I have Moana. And this is one of the few like movie musicals that I actually absolutely love every single song that's in the movie. And I know pretty much all the words to every song that's in the movie. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my sister really annoy Marquez by playing the soundtrack all the time. But uh, it's, it's a great movie about really pushing boundaries uh, when it comes to your dreams and what you want to do with your life when society really wants to like keep you in a bubble. My number 22 is going to be Bad Times of the R.O.R.E.L., which is a really interestingly put together movie. It is non-chronological in, in a certain sense to where the movie will be going and then it'll stop and go to someone's past. And at times it may seem like that will draw away from the momentum of the film, but it knows how to do it perfectly. Even whenever the tension is up high, it knows how to do it perfectly to where it really fits into the movie well. I've seen a lot of people say that this is like a Quentin Tarantino ripoff and maybe I see some inspiration drawn maybe, if maybe even if anything, inspiration. But uh, overall, it's a movie that holds up on its own and really just feels fresh and original. For my number 22, I have The Social Network, which is actually the second David Fincher movie I'm talking about in this video. Uh, but it's also written by Aaron Sorkin, who does a great job at writing scripts that have a lot of energy and are very fast paced, much like Molly's Game, uh, which I had on my list earlier. And it's a great biography about Mark Zuckerberg when he created Facebook uh, while he was attending Harvard and does a great job of just showing everybody's sides. Uh, even when Mark Zuckerberg is screwing over some people throughout the movie, it really shows his side of things as well. It doesn't just make him into this villainous person. It really does do a good job at just showing everything that happened. My number 21 is going to be Parasite, which was the last Oscar winner. And to me, this movie fully deserved the Oscar win. It's a great movie about class relation, uh, rich and poor, and ju just different, the metaphors between them and how they work. And this movie, what it does is it really plays itself off really well as a comedy and then stops and becomes something completely different at a certain point. And at, and in theory, that sounds like it might jump a little too much. It sounds like it really, the, the tone switches too fast. It seems like it, but the way it plays into the movie and the way the metaphors work with it actually works really well for the film. But speaking of the Oscars, I'm really curious on how next year is gonna work yeah. with all the <laughs> movies being pushed back this year. For my number 21, I have Marriage Story. And this is a movie that's probably the one of the most well acted movies I've ever seen. Is that the right way to say it? Oh, most yeah. well acted, I've, I've, I've probably. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Whatever. It's a. Uh, it, it is it, the acting of this movie is just phenomenal. From especially from Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson, the two main characters, and it just feels so real. Uh, just their acting and their writing just feels so real and raw about uh, these two people going through a divorce, but wanting to handle it uh, as humanly and as, um, uh, what's the word, not politely, I mean kind of politely, but as... Um, Words are not a specialty right now. <laughs> yeah. As humanly and as cleanly as possible, because they still care about each other, but then when they start bringing in things like lawyers, it just really muddles things and creates so much bigger problems than they had before. 
Well, guys, that was our 30 through 31. We will have our 30 <laughs> yep, we, 30, just, sorry, we just talked about two movies. 30 through 31. And we went backwards. So. <laughs> yeah. so we're just going all over yeah. the place right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was our 30 through 21. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm very tired right now. So <laughs> we have, we're going to be filming two more videos tonight. So hopefully it Maybe. Works, hopefully it works out fine. Um, and so, I mean, oh God, what am I trying to say after this? I don't know. <laughs> Thank you for watching, guys. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, comment and let us know what you thought about this video and let us know what you, if you like these movies or not, how much you like them or whatever, you know? And I, I, if Zach, if I skipped over something, because we haven't done this in a long time. Yeah, we, we haven't done it in over three months. <laughs> yeah, so if, uh, if it comes out weird, it's because we haven't done it in a long time <laughs> in three months. And also, it's like four o'clock in the morning. So. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Is, is that what you just said? Uh, uh, don't just, forget to follow us on social media is what I meant to say. And uh, we have a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter all at Two Awesome Men. Our Facebook is really inactive, though, so don't, you, don't, you, don't, you, don't, yeah. you can follow if you want to. All of our social media is inactive. Yeah, right? we'll but, try yeah. to make it more active. <laughs> Anyways, guys, um, thank you so much for watching, and you will see us later.